All right, so this will be the last question from the sample IB exam with uh, paper one. So this is question number 10, and let's just read through it here. So in this case, we've got a farmer who has a tractor in a field at a point A, two kilometers due south of a point B, on a road which runs from west to east. The farmer wishes to get to a point C, which is two kilometers east of B on the road, and the tractor travels at 20 kilometers an hour on the road and 12 kilometers per hour in the field. So the tractor will travel in a straight line across the field to join the road at a point P, X kilometers east of B. So first off, we've got to sketch a diagram to represent this information. So, okay, let's start there. So I'm going to go back and forth. So let's see. Um, So here's point B, and here's point A, because it says point A is two kilometers due south. So that's going to be two kilometers, and I'm even going to leave the units off. So that's two kilometers, just to make it a little less clunky. So that's two kilometers. And the road runs from west to east, and he wants to get to a point C. So there's our point C out here, and let's see. So that is also, okay, so that's two kilometers, two kilometers east, and again, I'm gonna leave the units off. So that's two kilometers east. So, okay, those lengths should probably be, right? This length and this length should be exactly the same since they're both two kilometers, but whatever. You can always write something like not to scale. And the tractor travels at 20 kilometers an hour in the Okay, so the tractor will travel in a straight line across the field to join the road at a point P, X kilometers east. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to say that the whole thing is 2 kilometers. And this little part is going to be X kilometers. So the, the farmer's traveling across the field. So I'm even going to shade it in. Okay, so this is all the nice green field that he's working in. So there he is going across the field. So he's driving that tractor, right? He's driving the tractor along the field, and eventually he's going to sync up with the road, and then he's just going to keep on trucking over. Okay, so that's what's going on in this situation. And let's see, so let's label. So along the road, maybe we can put somewhere... So along the field, he's traveling at 12 kilometers an hour. And on the road, the entire road, he's traveling at, what was it, 20 kilometers an hour. Okay, so there's our little, our little picture here. And I think that's a, a, decent, um, a decent little picture. So that's what's happening here. He's, he's, not, he's not, right, he's not just going straight to point B and then over. We're trying to figure out what's the quickest way. Maybe he should just go straight to point C along the field. Who knows? Maybe it's quickest to, to, to go part of the way and then along the road. And that's what we're trying to figure out. How far, how, you know, exactly where should he hit? And let's label our point B because that's important. Excuse me, our point P. So there's our point P. Where should that point P be that he's headed for? Okay, show that the total time T for the tractor to travel from A to C is given by this expression here. Okay, well, let's think about it. So, and I'm again, I'm just going to make some, uh, just some, let's see, just a, a few different uh, things here. So there's, he's going to take time, I'm going to take, like, write this as T1, and that's going to be the time spent in the field. And then we'll call this part T2. So that's going to be time along the road. So what we want to come up with is we want to come up with a function based on this value x that tells us, um, well, based on x, how long is it going to take him? So that's going to be our basically our, our time 1 plus time 2. OK, well, how do we come up with this? Well, we just use the fact that distance equals rate times time. And since we're going to have two distances, I'm going to write a little d1, r1, and t1, and then I'm going to write a little d2 equals 
R2 times T2. So just some subscripts. So if I solve for T1 in my first equation here, well, it's going to be the distance along that first path divided by the rate along that first path. That's going to be the time spent um, going across the field. So it's the distance across the field divided by the rate across the field. But we know that that's equal to 12. So there's the 12 already popping up. Plus, okay, we can do the same thing. We would have D2 divided by R2 equals our, the time spent along the road. So again, D2, I think that one's going to be a little bit easier, um, divided by the rate, which is 20. But let's see what we can figure out. So this is going to be our first distance, D1. Well, to get that distance, we're just going to use Pythagorean theorem here. right? So we've got this triangle, so I'm being a little loose here. So this is 2, and this is x, and this is a right angle. So we just have to figure out this hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse squared is going to equal x squared plus, and let me even uh, not use hypotenuse, let me use d1 because that's what we were doing. I guess I'll use capital D. So d1 squared is going to equal x squared plus 2 squared. Well, that means the first distance squared is going to equal, well, 2 squared is 4 plus x squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get that d1 equals the square root of 4 plus x squared. So that's going to be our d1 value. And our d2 value, I think that one's a little bit easier. We know that this entire length, right, this entire length is 2 kilometers. And if we've already gone x of those, how much is left? Well, this is going to be 2 minus x, right? It's going to be the remainder. So that is going to be our how we get our, our equation. So we said that d1 is going to be equal to the square root of 4 plus x squared divided by that rate, which is 12, plus the second distance, which is 2 minus x divided by 20. And that's going to be our function based on x. And, okay, that's how we get it, okay? So at first, you know, this equation maybe looks a little weird, but all you're really doing is just thinking about it in terms of time. And you're just using distance equals rate times time. Okay, so now part C, we have to use calculus to find the value of x that minimizes the journey time. So for part C, we're going to have to take a derivative. So derivative time. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this equation just briefly. I always like to pull my coefficients out front for some reason. So we've got 1 12th. Now we could write the square root of 4 plus x squared. But I'm going to rewrite that as well, because we're going to have to use the power rule on that. So we'll have 4 plus x squared raised to the 1 half, not only the power rule, but also the, the chain rule. Plus, then we've got 1 over 20 multiplied by 2 minus x. And if you want to, you know, it's all up to you. You could even multiply that out, which is I'm, I'm going to do. So if we distribute, we would have 2 over 20, which is just going to be 1 tenth, minus, okay, 1 over 20 times x after we distribute. Okay, so that's still just my function being rewritten. So now let's take the derivative. Okay, so the 1 twelfth comes along for the ride. Remember, our exponent comes out front. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 multiplied by 4 plus x squared. We take 1 away from the exponent, so 1 half minus 1 will give us negative 1 half. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of 4 is just 0, and the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. We've got this constant term, plus 1 tenth. The derivative of that is just 0. And the derivative of negative 1 over 20 times x is just going to be negative 1 over 20. So let's see here. If we clean this up a little bit, what is this going to give us? So 2 times 12 is going to be 24. And then we could put our 4 plus x squared raised to the negative 1 half in the denominator as to the positive 1 half. But then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rewrite that just back as a square root. And we have to be careful. So actually, I should have simplified this a little bit better. I wasn't looking all the way here. So the 2 and the 1 half, the, the 2 in the denominator, those will cancel. 
So let's even rewrite this as, so we'll be, we still have the 12 left over in the denominator, but we're gonna be left with an x, this x will be left in the numerator. Let's see, okay. So let's leave it like it was. So we've got x minus one over 20. So that's gonna be our derivative. And now we have to find critical numbers. And recall to find a critical number, you take your derivative, and we set that equal to zero. Okay, so now we have to solve this equation. So, okay, so a few different ways to do it. What I'm gonna start off by doing, and again, there's, again, there's different ways to do this. Um, I'm gonna start off by adding the one over 20 to both sides. So I'll be left with x over 12 multiplied by the square root of four plus x squared. That's gonna equal one over 20. Well, again, I can multiply both sides by 12. So if I multiply by 12 by 12, that's gonna leave me with x divided by the square root of four plus x squared. And 12 over 20, let's see, 12 over 20, what does that reduce to? So four goes into both of those, right? So 12 divided by four is three. 20 divided by four is five. So we've got three fifths left over. And now we're starting to get closer. So I've got this square root in the denominator. So to get rid of it, what I'm gonna do is simply square both sides. So in the numerator, we'll be left with x squared. And the square root of four plus x squared squared is just gonna be four plus x squared. And on the right, we'll have nine over 25. So I think we're, I think we're getting closer here. And now I just wanna turn this into a quadratic without a fraction. So next I'm gonna multiply both sides by four plus x squared. So I'll be left with nine over 25 multiplied by four plus x squared. All right, we're having fun. Oops, I got some leftover stuff where I looked at this a little bit earlier. I think I did it maybe a slightly different way, but that's okay. So I've got x squared. So let's see, nine times four will be 36 over 25, plus we'll have nine over 25 multiplied by x squared. So now, okay, I wanna get the x squared on one side, so I'm gonna subtract the nine over 25 x squared from both sides. I'm gonna leave the 36 over 25. Now, if we wanted to, I guess we could even go ahead and just uh, get rid of uh, the denominators again. That might be the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 25. So we've got 25 x squared minus, when we distribute to the next term, the 25s are gonna cancel. So we'll have nine x squared. On the right side, we'll just be left with 36. Again, the 25s are gonna cancel out. Let's see, so 20, 25 x squared minus nine x squared what is that? That's just gonna be 16x squared equals 36. We can divide both sides by 16. Well, let's see, that reduces. Uh, four goes into both of those. 36 divided by four is nine. 16 uh, divided by four is four. Lastly, if we take the square root of both sides, the square root of uh, nine is gonna be three. The square root of four is gonna be two. Obviously, you get um, a positive and a negative, but here we're talking about distance. So this is the only uh, solution I'm gonna write down here. Um, all right, I'm getting a little software update up there. Thank you very much. Um, so in this case, right, it, it's gotta be positive because we're talking about a distance. So this has to be our solution. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to be really thorough, and I'm not gonna be here, you can do this on your own. You can. You could always, you could verify this is a minimum. And you should probably technically do that. And you can do that again by using the first derivative test, right? So um, you could use the first derivative test and show that the derivative, if you take a value between uh, zero and three halves, that that is gonna be negative, which means your function is decreasing, so that means that the time is getting less and less. And then if you take a number larger than three halves, you can show that that function is increasing. 
which means that, hey, in fact, you do have a minimum time. You've got a minimum time at three halves. So you probably should verify that that's a minimum, but I think we've done most of the leg legwork there. And again, all you would do is just go back to this point, and you could plug in x equals 1, show that you get a negative number, then you could plug in um, x equals, I don't know, something slightly larger than 3 halves. I mean, you don't want it to be too large. I guess it really doesn't matter, to be honest. And then show that you get a positive number. So, okay, all right, that would be the solution to this one. And I think this is relatively thorough. I think they would be pretty happy if they saw all of this stuff. They would be like, okay, this person clearly has the gist and knows what they're doing. So, all right, once again, I hope this helps. This completes paper one. I hope you guys and gals find these videos helpful. And yeah, I'm gonna move on to paper two next.